Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Proverbs 14. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Get that, get that new set of scriptures that you got there, brother. Go ahead and get your authorized version. Follow me along. Read with me. Turn with me to the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. There comes a point in this video that you have a question about context and we don't cover it. Pause the video. Search the context yourself. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these be things be so. Follow me along. Okay? And plus, too, sometimes my mouth will go quicker than my brain, so follow me along. Sometimes, every once in a while, I will skip a groove. Okay? Please follow along with me. Read with me. Okay? Hmm. Go from the presence of a foolish man. Hmm. Proverbs 14, verses 3 and verse 9. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. To be foolish, to speak foolishly, is to speak, to behave as though you say in your, in your heart there is no God. you got to remember, there are a lot of deceivers out there, especially within the King James Bible and Christian movement, okay, who will never, ever utter with their lips that there is no God. But they say that in their heart. And as we discussed about last week, um, on touched about this, we're, we're going to get a little bit specific today. Okay, We're going to address one of the heresies that may be coming out of the pipe. We'll see. I don't know. But we're going to address it. But, Proverbs 14, verse 3 again. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Wise being equated with wisdom. Remember, there are two wisdoms. That wisdom that is first earthly, sensual, devilish. That wisdom that comes from Satan. Okay? And there is true wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Okay? And true wisdom leads on to true knowledge. Okay? This other wisdom that is first earthly, sensual, devilish has a knowledge, but it's a knowledge based off, predicated off of flesh. Whereas the wisdom that is the fear of the Lord is, is predicated from the Lord himself. And you got to remember, God is a spirit. Okay? Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increases by the strength of the ox. Yeah, sometimes we are like a bull in a china shop, right? Yeah. When someone is too finesse, too perfect, right? What do you mean? These, you know, if something's too good to be true, usually it isn't. Okay? Like I've told you, I have very zero trust. <laughs> For those who have no display, who do not have any righteous indignation, okay? I don't trust a man who doesn't have a little fire in them when it comes to the truth. I don't trust. And there are those who are so refined, like refined cyanide, that they never have that, except for safe people, of course. Or against safe people, I should say. Now, uh, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, right? But much increases by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness will not lie. And you know, that reminds me of um, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, when Paul said uh, in verse 12, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, Verses 12 and 13. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. 
who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And you got to remember, brethren, that these devil coadjutors, they are faithful to Satan, the little g-god of this world. Okay? Some of these coadjutors are so faithful that they're willing to go down on a sinking ship. Okay? Ad majorium de glorium. The Jesuit has no mind of their own. The Jesuits are a lifeless sword in the hand of their provincial. Okay? They're just a tool. They're just a tool that have no thought or mind of their own, but they're told what to think and what to act and what to do and so on and so forth, even though a lot of these Jesuit men and these coadjutors and infiltrators are very intelligent. But see, they have no will of their own. They're all under orders. Okay? A faithful witness will not lie. And that we have that witness within ourselves, okay, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who will lead you and guide you into all truth, okay? John talks about this in 1 John. The Lord that lives within you, save brother and sister, will not lead you into sin, okay? The Lord within you will not lead you into heresy, okay? But see, there are two wisdoms. There is the wisdom of, the, of this world that is earthly, sensual, devilish. And the wisdom that comes from the Lord, which is what? Pure? Clean? Okay? There are two wisdoms. Hmm. Which wis what wisdom do these infiltrators have, you wonder, right? <laughs> A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Hmm. Kind of like what the easy believism heretics did with Romans 10. Okay. Hey, don't worry about that. That's for another dispensation. It's not for today. Even though it was written by Paul, who uh, wrote doctrine specifically for this dispensation today. <laughs> yeah, we're going to look at that again. Yeah. 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 A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Okay? And in that verse, the scorner has no understanding, meaning departing from evil. Hmm. Hmm. And the scorner seeketh wisdom, the fear of the Lord, but findeth it not. Why? Because he has no understanding, because, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Okay? You do things the Lord's way. You have the fear of the Lord. Depart from evil. Okay? And you got to remember too, brethren, you got to remember too, that these infiltrators can mimic a lot of this, but only up to a point. And that's where it takes time to be a fruit discerner, except when it's something Captain Obvious. We, we talked about this at length uh, last week, okay? Let's continue. Go from the presence of a foolish man who's, who behaves and acts as if he says in his heart there is no God, okay? But some of these coadjutors, they don't act foolish, do they? But they are fools. Hmm. Because the God who is in their heart is Satan. Hmm. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You got to remember the infiltrators, the fakes, they have a knowledge. But what is that knowledge predicated for, of? Huh? That knowledge is based off of, predicated of, a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Well, the wisdom, the knowledge that comes from the wisdom that is the fear of the Lord, is what? Hold your place here. Psalm 19. My wife's favorite psalm. <laughs> One of her favorite psalms, but Psalm 19. 
Okay? Verses 9 on to, oh, verse 14. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Okay? And also you go to James. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Okay, James 3, we want verses, where is that, 13 on verse 16. Who is as a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Who has the fear of the Lord, and because of that fear of the Lord has knowledge? Hmm? That true knowledge, that is what? <laughs> Which is what? Pure? Hmm. Well, let's keep reading. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Ah, envying and strife, which these infiltrating heretic devils are all about inciting. <clears throat> this wisdom, see, it's a wisdom. It shows that it's a wisdom. Hmm? This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Hmm. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Verse 17 and 18. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And like for, uh, in 1 John chapter 3, that spirit, that spirit, and the Lord is that spirit, okay, the spirit of truth, will guide you into all truth, and that's what he's talking about in 1 John chapter 3, okay? The Holy Ghost is not going to guide you into sin, Okay? He's not. And the Lord within you has no hypocrisy. Okay? There's no hypocrisy in the Lord. There's hypocrisy in us. Yes, there is. But in the Lord, there is no hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Hmm. So the wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish is what? <laughs> Envying and strife. Which causes what? Confusion. But the wisdom that is uh, from above is what? Pure, peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Hmm. Go back to Proverbs 14. Verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. There again you see wisdom being uh, marked with prudence and understanding. Okay? To understand his way. To depart from evil. But also to know what the will of the Lord is because we have the fear of the Lord in us. And we search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. In fact, we already looked at Psalm 19. Okay? In verse 9, Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there's favor. Now, in Ephesians chapter 3, go to Ephesians, Paul specifically mentions to us about how the doctrine for this dispensation 
was revealed unto him. Okay? All right. After the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, and after the Lord went up into heaven and the Lord gave the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, it went to the Jew first. The kingdom of God went to the Jew first. But Jewry, as in its totality, not individually, as in its totality, rejected the kingdom of God. Okay? Hence, us Gentiles grafted in. It was already this dispensation, which is by grace through faith. Okay? All right? But it went to the Jew first. Okay? That's why it seems unto some that there were discrepancies, as some would explain it, about how he says in Acts 2.38 to be baptized, and then in Acts 4, there's no mention of baptism. Okay? Why is that? Okay? As John the Baptist was going first, going forward, baptizing people for the kingdom of heaven, okay? The kingdom of God, which was the spiritual, was to be first offered unto the Jewish people alone, unto the Hebraic people alone. Okay? But in its in Jewry, in its totality, rejected it. Not individually, because individual Jews, Hebrews, were saved. Absolutely. Okay? But that rejection in a in a whole, the Lord, as it was prophesied and elsewhere in the Old Testament, that light was come unto the Gentiles. Okay? And with the officiality, if you will, of the Gentiles, which was prophesied it was going to happen anyway, but it happened in Acts 8. And in Acts 8, the Ethiopian eunuch, who was a Hamite, okay? All right? <laughs> was... Recorded scripture, the first Gentile grafted in. People like to argue that there were Gentiles in Acts chapter 2. No, there weren't. No, there weren't. No, there weren't. There were no Gentiles in Acts chapter 2. Okay? There weren't. The Lord specifically sent Philip out to the Ethiopian eunuch. Okay? All right? That was the beginning of the grafting in. All right? All right? The dispensation didn't change. It was this dispensation. Just, it was just going to the Jew first, primarily, the kingdom of God. They rejected it with the stoning of Stephen. Okay. Gentiles brought in to make the Jew jealous. And upon that, we find in Ephesians chapter 3, Verses 1 on to verse 7. Because you, you got to remember, Paul, you read in the book of Acts, even though Paul is the apostle for us Gentiles, the gospel that was revealed unto him was what? Romans 1. Romans 1. We're, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. But I, I, we're going to, got to read this anyway. Romans 1. 16 and 17. Okay? Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. From faith to faith. Faith in what God will do in the Old Testament to the faith that it is finished. Okay? But you read in the book of Acts, he went to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. Okay? You see that recorded quite readily in the book of Acts. Okay? But that tells us that the gospel encompasses the Jew, the Hebraic people, and Gentiles, anyone who is not a Hebrew. Okay? So there is one gospel. Beware of people telling you that there is one gospel unto the Jew and another gospel unto the Gentile. That is heresy, and that is a foundational base for hyper-dispensationalism. Okay? 
And within that, you run into all kinds of heresies. All like, uh, well, water baptism was only for the Jew, or being uh, born again was only for the Jew, or uh, the obvious Romans 9, 10, and 11 are written specifically for the time of Jacob's trouble. And as we're going to look at another heresy that these devils uh, may be coming out with, that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse uh, 12 is doctrinally written to the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> You're like, come on, Brad. Who's going who's gonna to try to say that? It might surprise some of you who are going to try to say something like that, if they haven't already. Hmm. But, about this. Now, we've touched on this last week, but we're going to touch on it a little, yeah, a little here today. Ephesians 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, apostle unto the Gentiles, Paul brought the gospel unto us, the Gentiles, and Peter was bringing the gospel that was revealed unto Paul unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? That's how that works. There aren't two gospels. There's one gospel. Okay? If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which has given me to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote four in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages <laughs> was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself. And what is that? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So Paul right there is claiming that the gospel was revealed unto him. Okay? And you want to know something interesting? Okay? People like to attack uh, Paul saying he was a false apostle and that the apostles were getting like uh, what was the one argument about James that it was um, oh James's letter was in response to refute Paul or some nonsense like that no the book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble okay but Peter Peter says um in 2 Peter chapter 3, okay, verses 14 on to verse oh, 18, okay? <laughs> Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, okay? Even as our beloved brother Paul, who rebuked Peter to his face in front of people. Okay? Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them, speaking in, in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood by those who are not of us, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Rest, and they rest our words. You just said, you just said. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that's done with. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall. For 
from your own steadfastness. Now I had wrote that down to be um, to be mentioned here uh, towards the end of this video, but we're mentioning it now. So saved people can get messed up. By their own, sometimes, yes. But see, if they are genuinely saved, born again, converted, spirit of truth that is in them will lead them and guide them into all truth. We as saved brethren people, we can um, sear our conscience. We can quench the spirit. Absolutely. Yes, we can. But see, once saved, always saved. Sealed until the day of redemption. You have the Lord within you. Hence, you cannot fall away. Saved people fall. But people over the centuries claiming to be Christians who want to join themselves with us as things are proceeding and good is evil and evil is good today. Those who were never of us are being made manifest that they were never of us, hence the falling away. And see, those who come in to seek to gain disciples for themselves, as Paul warns us about in Acts 20, verses 29 and 30, okay? He was seeking to um, get people away from the truth and uh, get people to themselves, okay? They, those who fall away can cause those who are saved to fall. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. And those who are falling away reveal that they were never of us are right now as we speak, causing some to fall because they're so smooth and so meek on the outside. Yeah. Verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Okay. Galatians chapter 2. Come on, fingers, work with me. Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 5. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Okay? But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Okay? And we're going to be reading on to verse 10. But of those who seem to be somewhat, yeah, Whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. God accepteth no man's person. Okay? God's not a respecter of persons today, even though the devil wants you to believe that. Okay? For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Now, check this out. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, and the gospel of the circumcision unto Peter, okay? Now, the easy believism heretics, also these hyperdispensationalists might come to this and say, okay, there's a gospel that you preach unto the Gentile and unto the Jew. No, the same one gospel given unto Paul to uh, preach unto the Gentiles and unto Peter to preach unto the Jews. That one gospel, okay? Not two gospels. One for the Jew and one for the Gentile. That is heresy. Okay? <clears throat> for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James K. 
Kephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. It says it right there. Only they would that only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was fro forward to do. And then it goes on to read about how Paul rebuked Peter for not walking in accordance with the gospel that was revealed unto him, Paul, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? You understand? Good. All right. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. All right. This is not some bold stuff. But see, Satan and his ministers of righteousness. Number one, they're banking on people's ignorance of the scriptures. And number two, they these ministers of righteousness are also utilizing to their effect that it seems to me that a lot of the church of the living God has a very short attention span and memory. Well, what do you mean, Brad? Well, because it was just a couple years ago that that big stink about Romans 10 came out. But yet, because most people's attention span is that of a gnat, and also with Christianity, and also the, the mentality of your only relative as your newest upload, right? It's weird. It's like these coadjutor devils Hope that you don't remember what they, the heresy that they put forth a while ago. Like we addressed last week, how Satan is just simply repackaging the same thing and putting it out in a different way. And I'm dumbfounded that a lot of these King James Bible-believing Christians can't see this and put two and two together and be like, whoa, dude, this, this happened before, but in a different thing. What, what, where are you guys? Where are you? Anyway, Acts chapter 15, verses 1 under verse 11. Okay? This is what Paul was referring on to, the Jerusalem conference. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Circumcised, meaning that, okay, you have to keep the law also, okay? Keeping the law of Moses, okay? That's what he is, that's what they are inferring with that statement because when you look into scripture, if you're circumcised, you got to keep the law, okay? All right? So they are saying, men were coming around, it's like, you got to still keep the law of Moses in order to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God. That is not true for today, okay? Galatians addresses that in its entirety. But, verse 2, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believe. And Pharisees, right? Pharisee, tradition, scripture. Tradition, scripture. That's what a Pharisee is. Okay? But they believed, saying, that it was needful to command to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Hmm. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Talking about his thing with Cornelius, okay? 
And remember, the Jews require a sign. Peter needed the vision of the sheep. Okay? Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And not so, Lord. And the Lord said, That which I have cleansed, call not that call that not common. Okay? It's not talking about the dietary thing. That it's uh, you know, uh, Paul talks about that in First Timothy chapter four. You can eat pork today, okay? But okay, he's making reference onto the Cornelius thing in Acts chapter ten. Okay, and God which knoweth the hearts. Yes, God does know your heart. Read uh read Jeremiah seventeen when uh, when it's about your heart. And also uh you're a fool if you trust in your own heart. Yeah. Remember, someone who is claiming to be a Christian comes to you, well God knows my heart. Run away from someone like that. Because that's the statement of someone who has no wisdom, fear of the Lord, or understanding departing from evil. That's the statement of someone who's trying to justify sin. Every single time. Okay? And God which not the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. God is not a respecter of persons. And put no difference between us and them. Hmm. For ye are all, all one in Christ Jesus. There is neither Jew nor Greek, male or female, barbarian or Scythian. Okay? We're all one salvifically in Christ Jesus. Culturally, that's a different story. Salvifically, we are all one. There's no distinction, no difference in salvation today. No, not, not so ever. Hmm. Okay? And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, get this. Okay? Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear, keeping the law and trying to keep the law perfectly? The law is our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. The law is there to tell you what sin is. Okay? That's what the law is there for. You can't keep the law perfectly. Okay? You can. You mess up at one point, you, you mess it all up. Okay? You can't keep the law perfectly. Okay? And someone coming around saying that you got to keep the law today, uh, that's speaking words to no prophet. Okay? Verse 11. Here it is. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So what is happening here is that they are acknowledging the gospel that was revealed, number one, unto Paul, that he was preaching amongst the Gentiles, is the revealed gospel that is for us today, the doctrine that is for us today that pertains unto salvation. Okay? And after this, they were all preaching what Paul preached. Okay? Ipso facto done. Okay? So, Paul, the doctrine specifically was revealed unto Paul. Okay? It was. We've already looked at the evidence of that. And we already also covered that in previous videos last week. Okay? But let's, let's hit a little that now we already read Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Okay? About how it, well, let's, a little bit more won't hurt. Romans 1, verses 16 and 17 again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay? And also, Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 6, on to verse 16. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these not having the law are law unto themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile... The meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. Verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. The gospel that was revealed unto Paul 
specific doctrine for this dispensation, which is found specifically within the Pauline epistles. That does not mean we discount the other epistles within the New Testament, no. But the doctrine, the salvific doctrine for us today in this dispensation was revealed unto Paul. And they all, the rest all followed suit as we already looked, as Peter acknowledged. Okay? All right? But then, well, then they say, well, what about Hebrews and James? Hebrews is written unto who? The Hebrews. James, unto the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Okay, those are two uh, time of Jacob's trouble epistles, as is the book of Revelation. Okay? All right? Okay? But what was written, what the Lord wrote through Paul in the specific Pauline epistles attributed unto him from uh, Roman on, Romans unto Philemon, okay? Okay? You can't prove to me either or about Hebrews. We know that the Lord is the author of the book of Hebrews, but whose hand he used, you cannot prove to me yea or nay, nor can I prove to you yea or nay, but we know who is the author of it, the Lord Jesus Christ. I know the book of Hebrews is attributed to Paul, but when you read the Pauline epistles, specifically Romans unto Philemon, that's pretty specific that he identifies himself in those. Okay? And he being a Hebrew of the Hebrews, why didn't he specifically, if, if Paul was, and I don't believe he is, and this, see, and this is an argument that a heretic trying to distract you would have you to go off on. Okay? We know... Ultimately, who is the author of Scripture? The Lord Jesus Christ, God, who is our Father. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. One God, comprised of His Spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I have, okay? We're not God, no. But we have a Spirit, soul, and body, just like God, okay? Meaning we're made in His image like that, okay? But see, that's an argument that a heretic, trying to justify themselves in their attack, will go off on, Okay? But we know who is the author of the scriptures, the Lord. And the Pauline epistles is doctrine specific for us today. Okay? Specific. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, go to uh, uh, chapter 16, Romans chapter 16. Okay, we covered this in previous, uh, some of the videos previous, but we're hitting them again. Verses 17. On to the close. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. The doctrine, specifically for our salvation, for this dispensation, found within the Pauline epistles. You do not discount the, the totality of Scripture. But remember, all Scripture is written for you. It's not all written to you. Okay? you got to remember that. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, flesh is their God, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Oh, brethren, you got to get into this book more. you got to read the scriptures more. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. And I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple, with, simple concerning evil. We are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Okay? Simple concerning evil. Contrary to Scripture, it's evil. Okay? It's evil. Simple. Well, yea, hath God said. Watch out for that. Okay? And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosopater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertus, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Uh, Paul was the one doing the talking. Tertus was the one doing the right. That's what that means. Okay? Knowing how devils get, they would probably try to use that, and I'm sure they have. Paul wasn't the author of uh, uh, Romans. Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. 
Gaius, mine host, and the whole church saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you. And Quartus, the brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, to God only wise. Be glory to Jesus Christ forever. Amen. We read to the close. Excuse me. Okay? His gospel. Not that he came up with it himself. You read about that in Galatians chapter 1 as well. But the gospel for this dispensation, the doctrine for this dispensation was given unto Paul. And the others, after Acts 15, went forth off of that. Okay? All right? So what Paul wrote in the Pauline epistles is doctrine specifically for us today. Okay? And 1 Corinthians chapter 18, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 24. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, not being saved, are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Now, prudence is marked with wisdom, fear of the Lord. There is another wisdom that professes to have prudence and have an understanding. But see, that is a wisdom based off of what? Things that are earthly, sensual, devilish. Not things that are pure, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Let's continue. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath, God, hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Foolishness of preaching. Who's going to call preaching foolish? Church of the living God? No. Christians? Fake a good preacher can say what he got to say in five minutes. Hey, get a lot of good, strong meat there, buddy, right? Yeah. Oh, that's too long. Well, you'd rather sit and watch a Hollywood movie for two hours than listen to the Word of God being preached. Brad, your voice is annoying. Okay, I'll give you that. But see, <laughs> see, the spirits will identify. And we both know that's the truth. Okay? <clears throat> For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, Onto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, called again, called way of the cross, okay, our Lord God has called us the way of the cross. That's what called means, okay? But we, okay, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Okay? And also chapter 15. Chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians. Verses 1 under verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? 
the death, burial, and resurrection revealed unto Paul. Okay? The apostles, of course, were witness to it, of course. But the gospel, the doctrine that is for us today specifically, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, is primarily found in Paul. You do, of course, you do not discount like first and second Peter, first John, and stuff like that. No, you don't. No, no. But the core of our doctrine for today is found within the Pauline epistles. Hence, what Paul wrote was specific for us today. Okay? Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 12 on to verse 17. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, like we already looked at, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He didn't know better. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause! I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And of course, Chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 20 and 21. God, watch out for this. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Hmm. And I know heretics like to make a big to-do about science and say that that's actually knowledge. Uh, things that are different are not the same. But going with your argument, okay? All right? Let's say it is that. Um, therein. What knowledge is, what wisdom is the knowledge that these guys who come in with profane and vain babblings what is that knowledge? What is the wisdom that that knowledge is based off of? Well, science, right? Hmm. It's a wisdom that is first what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Hmm. And also go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 and verse 9. No man that warreth, and that, we, we read this in previous videos, but I wanted to address it specifically again today. And we're going to get a little bit more specific here coming up pretty quick. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Jesus Christ is the door. You have to go through the door. You have to go the way that he has called us, the way of the cross. You can't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. You're a thief or a robber, okay? There are no shortcuts. There are those out there who want to take shortcuts, get their Bible programs to produce their sermons for them, okay? You have all these books on the spirituality of Christianity that are the, just a hodgepodge of filth that you can find on ChristianBooks.com. There's nothing wrong with someone of the Church of the Living God writing a book. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you got to remember, there are so why are there so many books out there on spiritual matters? Hmm? Why? Why? Because Christianity, as it is today, of course, is there to teach lost people how to be religious. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have to, I have to con uh, concur with that statement as well. I have to. Isn't it obvious? Isn't it obvious, huh? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Nothing that he came up, but in that it was his, that it was revealed unto him. And we looked in Acts chapter 15. After that, they were all preaching what well, Paul preached. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evil evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Amen, amen. Of course, of course, uh, 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 10. Again, Paul did not come up with where it says my gospel. It, it, it's not that he came up with it. He's making a reference that unto him was revealed. It was revealed. The gospel, the doctrine for today. Okay? Why do you think a lot of people call Paul a false prophet? Because they don't like what he wrote. What the Lord wrote through Paul for the doctrine for today. They want to bring in elements of the law. Okay? Why? Because they want to justify themselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Beg your pardon. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Just one verse. We want verse 18. We want verse 18. <clears throat> uh, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. And also you read in Hebrews chapter 5. Oh, thank you. Uh, one verse, verse 4. And no man taketh this, now, this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. And of course, we can go to Galatians. Or we, should, we should go there, of course. Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. Okay. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 10 on to 12. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See, these heretics, these devils, who come in and want to make a chop shop job of the Pauline epistles, they're doing that for why? They want to please men. They want to justify themselves and give themselves basis to attack the church of the living God. And example, Romans 9, 10, 11 is written for the time of Jacob's trouble. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, <laughs> verses 3 on to 12 is written for the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> it's the same thing that the, the devil did with the easy believism stuff that he's, I think he's going to be doing now with 2 Thessalonians. Okay? So Paul, again... A Paul, once again, according to these heretic devils. So, and because they didn't like, you know, call on the name of the Lord, especially uh, in Romans 10. So they said, oh, that's actually for another dispensation. And they don't like certain things in 2 Thessalonians. So it's like, oh, that's for another dispensation. Again, Someone comes out trying to tell you that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 12 is Paul writing for the time of Jacob's trouble, doctrine specific. The Lord rebuke you, you lying devil heretic. And I pray that those who are deceived by your lies will be woken up to the fact that you're a liar and a heretic and a devil. Okay? I would hope that the, the brethren are in the scriptures daily enough to be like, whoa, wait a minute, dude, that's crazy. But then again, 
If you got to look to a man, get away from someone, brethren. When they start telling you to defend themselves and to defend their attacking points, like we talked about last week, when someone comes around saying that Paul, within the Pauline epistles, we are have our, we are looking at what which was doctrine specific, which is doctrine specific for us today, run away from someone who is telling you Romans 9, 10, and 11 is for the time of trouble. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 12 specifically is for this doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. You get away from someone like that. Okay? More on that in a little bit. Okay? All right? Verse 11 in Galatians 1. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, so, okay, the doctrine within the Pauline epistles, so noted unto Paul, is specific doctrine for us today within this dispensation. Okay? All right? We're talking about the Pauline epistles. Okay? You can, okay, you can debate about or talk about First and Second Peter, First John and stuff like that, but the specific Pauline epistles, a specific doctrine for us today. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? All right? Because there is only one gospel. And that gospel was revealed unto Paul. As we looked at in uh, Acts chapter 15, which we are seeing here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8, unto the close. Now as Janes and Jambres withstood Moses, I wanted to use some people's names, but I'm not going to. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, as men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. My doctrine. The doctrine within the Pauline epistles. Paul himself is even saying what the Lord revealed to me is doctrine for us today. Okay? <clears throat> Persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. I am speaking to you the word of the Lord, the scripture, because the Lord is speaking through me, through the scripture, unto you. And the spirit identifies. Okay? That's prophesying for today. All right? And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Yes, it is. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, what Paul wrote in the Pauline epistles is doctrine specific for us today. He was not writing doctrine specific for the time of Jacob's trouble. You can argue all day and all night about Hebrews. That's a distraction. The Lord is the author of the scriptures. But he used Paul. Paul has told us and has admitted to, the, uh, to it and even 
Peter did. Okay? That the doctrine that Paul was received of the Lord is specific for us today in this dispensation. Now go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We have done specific work on uh, 2 Thessalonians. The Lord had me to do a video on it where I made a mistake in it, but the Lord, um, had, I corrected that. The Lord corrected me on that. Uh, and that'll be in the description box as well. Okay, the link for the correction of the uh, that was in that is in that video. Okay, when I make mistakes, the Lord corrects me and I leave them so you can see them. Okay. With the correction video. Okay. Now let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, a devil wanting to justify himself and attack others will come to this. And like they did with the Romans thing, with Romans 10, they will hunker down on specific words. Okay. Well, Brad, you do that too. Um. Number one, I'm not calling it a salvation issue, okay? Number one, okay? But it's for a prophet. The words to no prophet, sir, are those who come around telling you that you have to go under the law. We've already discussed that in other videos, okay? But these people come and argue about words to, uh, to start strife and debate and confusion and envy and stuff like that. Okay? But as they did with Romans, they do it to defend themselves and their attacking points. Okay? you got to watch that. So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3, on to verse 12. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin the son and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Are we in the falling away right now? Yes, we are. And see, a devil wanting to defend himself and attacking points will say that the falling away is saved people that get messed up. Hmm. That's the falling away. Well, saved people fall. But safe people do not fall away. Okay? And here's an interesting thing to... Now, and this is the basis that these devils will focus on. They will focus on the falling away. Why? To defend themselves and to attack others like they did with the Romans thing. Brother so-and-so, he saved because he just believed... But he's a heretic teaching uh, against the, uh, the scriptures and leading people to hell. But he's saved because he... See, they use that to attack others while defending themselves. Wicked devil. Okay? But why would they do that for falling, falling away? And then they'll focus on well, what does it mean to fall? To fall from a standing position. Okay? We all know what fall means. Okay? But falling away. Okay? Uh, for you to, now, here's, an, here's another clever thing that these devils will uh, try to do. Go to Luke chapter 8. You know, fall away, uh, that's the only falling away right there. But you know, fall away is found elsewhere in Scripture. And these devils, these slick, slicker than snot, smooth devils, will probably point this out to you. Just like they did with the Romans thing, where they go to Joel about calling on the name of the Lord. Like they did with um, being born again. How uh, it was mentioned by John, and uh, you know, in the book of John and Peter. So it must only be for the Jews, right? But yet Paul talks about being born again, yet doesn't use the words born again. Okay? All right? See, they're using the same tactics, but for different things. That's what you need to, that's, that's what, it's like, how can some people not see this? That's what's like, wow, wow. 
Then again, the devils know that ignorance is one of their greatest weapons, is one of Satan's greatest weapons. And also, that especially when it comes to social media, you're only as um, new as your latest video, right? And that our attention span is that of an ad anyway. So, when it comes to this thing about fall away, Luke chapter 8, verses 11 on verse 13. Okay, you you wicked dog, you wicked devil. Luke chapter eight, verses eleven on to verse thirteen. Check this out. Before the death, burial, and the resurrection. So then, wait a minute. Then yes, it must mean only for the Jews. Then right. Luke eight, verses eleven on to verse thirteen. Now. The parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Okay? Those by the wayside are they that hear. The, that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word. Taketh away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. Okay? Let's keep reading. They on the rock are they which when they hear. Receive the word with joy. And these, they on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root. Which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, fall away. Hmm. Written before the death, burial, and resurrection. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. But it's telling us something very important here. Look at that verse, verse 13. They on the rock, and of course this is about the, the parable of the sower. Go ahead and read the context on your own time. Okay? They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. Only skin deep, see. Which for a while believe. And in time of temptation, fall away. For a while believe, but in time of tension, they fall away. See, they had no root. They were only superficial. They had no roots. Huh. And they fell away. They endured for a while. Like with Christianity. The devil and his uh, ministers of righteousness for centuries have been trying to add themselves to the church of the living God and say, hey, we're, we're saved just like you. But as evil is increasing... Evil is good and good is evil. That which was, like we talked about last week, uh, even 30 years ago, uh, which would be clearly recognized as wicked, is accepted today. Lost infiltrators that sought to affix themselves onto the church of the living God, they are the ones that are falling away. And those that are falling away can cause those of the church of the living God to fall. But they don't fall away. Or else you're not sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Isn't that interesting? But, oh, that was for the death, burial, and resurrection, Brad. Oh, now, check this out. Check this out. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Therefore, now, the book of Hebrews is also written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Book of the Hebrews. Okay? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of, and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, 
and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put to him an open shame. See, Brad? Falling away is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, but see, the problem you have, devil, is Paul, and even Peter, has, it has shown us in Scripture that the doctrine that Paul was given in the Pauline epistles, what he was given is doctrine specific for us today. There's your problem, okay? There's your problem. Falling away, okay? Fall away. And see, Hebrews 6 tells says that when someone falls away, it's what? If they shall fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them and put him to an open shame. Hmm. So that tells you that what? Fall away. If someone falls away, they have no root. Then they most likely were not saved. But see, for centuries, the devil and his ministers of righteousness have done what? Wanted to infiltrate. To be shoulder and shoulder with the church of the living God. And then, while evil is being called good today, they are being revealed that they are not of us. And see, someone who is lost, who wants to justify himself and his wicked little crazy doctrines, will lead you in circles because they can't get it, because they have not the spirit of truth, but they have that spirit, that spirit of Antichrist, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Let's keep reading, though. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. And of course people who want to tell you that today you can lose your salvation, but they always say you can get it back, and they go to Hebrews 6. You, 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 where can you get back your salvation? In Hebrews 6, you can't, because this is written for the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But see, what it is doing is, it is showing us falling away. And under the law, which was in Luke, okay, where it mentions fall away because they have no root, okay? Paul may, it mentions falling away in 2 Thessalonians, Okay? And here in Hebrews, fall away. Okay? And remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. Okay? Remember that. So, falling away is not talking about saved people who get messed up. But those, like it says... In 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things that seal until the day of redemption. Okay? And they make arguments about, well, what were they standing for? They put on their facade as if they're standing for the true God. But over time, it was revealed that they were not of us and they are falling away. The fake are falling away. Okay? The fake are falling away. And go to Romans chapter 11 now. Romans chapter 11. Okay? Romans chapter 11. Save people fall. Save people don't fall away because they are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Romans chapter 11, verses 1 on verse 12. Okay? 
And again, remember, the easy believism devil came to this in order to justify their heresy and to attack people. They're nonsensical, just believe without scriptural repentance. Okay? No, this is not. This is doctrine for us today. Okay? And if someone comes around telling you otherwise, get away from them. They're lying. They're a heretic. They're working for the Vatican, most likely. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for? But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Election meaning the elected way of the cross. Okay, you got to watch out for that with these Calvinists and their elect and non-elect. Okay, elected is defined by context. Okay, the elect of God is the Hebraic people. But for us today, in Christ Jesus, in salvation, there is neither Jew nor Greek. But God elected the way of the cross. So if you, to be saved by the Lord, you have to go the way he elected, the way of the cross. Hence, you are of the elect today. Comprende? Let's continue. What then? Israel hath not... Okay, we already read that. Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the, them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David said, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense with the sea unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Okay? But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now it says fall there. Okay? Yes. Israel is the apple of God's eye. He will never reject Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew. Never. Okay? Never. Okay? Israel will never be fallen away. Okay? Never. There will be those of Israel that will fall away. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Israel, the apple of God's eye, God is not done with Israel. God will never cast away Israel. Okay? Today, the Gentile is the head, and they are the tail, as a thing of judgment. But God has not cast away his people. We already saw that. Okay? Verse 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? See a good example of falling versus falling away. Okay? Israel has fallen. But you read Romans 11 here. God has not cast away Israel, nor will he ever. Because salvation is of the Jew, the Hebrew, those taken from Shem. Okay? See, you can make a big stink about what it means to fall. Okay? And the word fall itself distract you. Okay? There's a difference between fall and falling away. Okay? Because, what is that? Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, 
Verses 15 on to verse 18. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Mm -hmm. And that mischief, of course, cause those who are not of us to fall away. Being made manifest that they were never of us. Mm. And let's keep reading. All right. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. And also, uh, go to Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, verses 8, on to verse 10. Micah 7, verses 8, on to verse 10. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Hmm. 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 Very interesting. Very interesting. And also now, Romans 14. Romans 14, 11 on to verse 15. Okay? Now, context, this is talking about dietary stuff. Okay? But, for it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Saved people, when we get caught up, we're going to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. The rest are going to give account at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? That's why you want to be saved today. So you can get redeemed for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Okay? But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Oh boy! Fall. Hmm. Yes. Yes. And of course, he's talking about what? He's talking about what? You know, dietary things. Okay. That's the main. And one day, one man steameth one day above another. Okay. All right. Like if you want to take a day, the day of uh, Thursday, it's like that day we just set aside so we can, you know, be with the Lord. And yes, you're supposed to do that every day, but we're supposed to have at least one day totally onto the Lord. If you want to do it on the actual Sabbath, go ahead. If you want to do it on Sunday, go ahead. If you want to do it on Thursday, go ahead. Okay? All right? We're not to judge one another in things we eat or in those matters. And of course, um, uh, heretics want to try to weave in uh, Roman Catholic paganism. Never mind about that. Okay? That's not what it's talking about. Okay? But the stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Save people fall. But we don't fall away. And verse 14 on to verse 15. Context. I know and, and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, thou walkest, not, thou walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Okay? So, the fall we looked at. Okay? Save people fall, but we don't fall away, okay? We do not fall away. 
First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? First Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 7. <clears throat> All right? This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given the hospitality apt to teach. Not given the wine, no striker. Not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler. Okay? Striker and a brawler. Okay? There is a difference. Not covetous. You know, not uh, being, aha, aha. Well, you just said, you just said. Trying to take, taking you in circles. Using circular reasoning with you. Okay? One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest be lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Who? Fall. Hmm. Hmm. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. You know, there are some people out there who want to be in certain positions, but, um, you know, they may be a novice, a babe yet, and they can get, you know, proud of themselves, like that young man from Indiana, okay, unfortunately, all right, or, or they still are struggling with things of the flesh and they can't give it up yet, hmm? or they're making dumb choices, okay, all right, safe people fall, but safe people do not fall away, okay, all right, and of course, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, let's read this, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 8, on to verse 11. Hebrews 4, 8 on to verse 11. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? For there, excuse me, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us... Labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 unto verse 11. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Did we already look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6? Hold on, 1 Timothy. Ah, 1 Timothy chapter 6, excuse me, I forgot this. Another one, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. When you love money, okay? When you have the love of money, all right? You can fall into destruction and perdition. Not fall away. And see, someone who is not of us, who already has that love of money, see how that works? Okay? And also Galatians, which I forgot. Galatians chapter 5. Before we get to 
uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, okay, Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. You know, willingly do that to go so that you can uh, try to keep the law. Okay? Because why? You're doing it yourself, right? Right. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Hmm. Why? Because you are doing, you're justifying yourself by the law. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? It's no longer, you're no longer depending on the grace of the Lord, but on you keeping the law. Okay? And notice, there's no fallen away there. Okay? Say if someone saved might want to just, just like get deceived by someone who has fallen away. Someone who was never of us? Oh, you got to keep the law, man. And they will introduce these things that are works to keep you saved and be saved and stay right with God. Got to watch out for these people, brethren. Let's continue. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Oh, I wonder. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Like rat poison is 99% good food. That 5% as well kill you, see. Okay? Now, go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 11. Okay? For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What things? Verse 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to, your, and, to, uh, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, which is self-sacrifice. Hmm. And notice knowledge a knowledge predicated off of what wisdom? The fear of the Lord or the wisdom that is first earthly, sensual, devilish? Because remember, devils can imitate, mimic a lot of the fruits of the Spirit, but they can only do that to a point and for so long. You can't keep up your ruse forever. Verse 8 again. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Fall. Hmm. But, see, it's a war of the spirit against the flesh. And we don't always make the right choices. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. The present truth. Okay? And 
First Peter chapter 3, just one verse. We already looked at this, but we're going to hit it again. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 12 is written for the time of Jacob's trouble, doctrinally. That's the error of the wicked. Beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. See, those who are fallen away can cause those of us who are saved to fall. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? Let's, let's pick this up there. Okay? Now, see, these devils, like they did with the whole Romans thing a couple years ago, which these devils have hoped you have forgotten about. And apparently some of you have. So they come to verse 3 in 2 Thessalonians. And they focus everything on that falling away. And they try to say that the falling away is actually saved people that go away from the truth. No, saved people who fall. But those who are never of us, they are the ones that fall away. Well, were they falling away in the first century? Uh, not as they have been now. Okay, see, and those are the useless arguments that these devils will bring up. And why do they focus on that falling away so predominantly? Well, brother so-and-so, I believe he's saved. He's just falling away and it's up to me to correct everybody snake and see when they focus all that on falling away then they have to ultimately bring in well this is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble no it isn't he's describing things okay which will be in the time of Jacob's trouble yes but we already looked at Doctrinally, this is written for us today. This is doctrine for us today. Prove it to you. Okay, let's keep reading. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And of course, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, will do that uh, in the third rebuilt temple. Yes, okay. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's already at work. What's the problem? What's, what's the difference? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. See, the body of Christ is on the earth. And yes... If that man of sin, the son of perdition, were revealed today while the body of Christ is on the earth, even people who can't see eye to eye would put that all aside. It's like, that, that, that's, that's the man of sin, the son of perdition. Everybody of the church of the living God would be screaming, that's the man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That's why you got to watch out for Jeffrey Greider, who's telling you that uh, that macaroni guy is the son of perdition. He's not! He's not. Okay? If the son of perdition were revealed today, everybody of the church of the living God who was genuinely saved, of the church of the living God, of course, but be, that, that, that's, that's that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? So, Satan is not, does not have full, true, free reign on this earth yet why because only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way okay we the body of christ are letting hindering satan okay but once we take get taken out of here the redemption of the purchased possession 
And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? Yes, he will. All right? Now, here's where these devils will get really tricky. And say, because what they're... And then they will talk about the... Uh, about strong delusion. Because, hey, if, if they go through all that palaver about falling away, that try to say that it saved people that fall away, well then, the great, that, that uh, strong delusion has got to be specifically only referenced onto that man of sin, the son of perdition. No. Let's keep reading. Now, even him who is, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, he's referring on to that man of sin. Yes, he is. But can, does not Satan do that today? All power and signs and lying wonders? Like these magicians who can make things appear? Okay? Like drummers who can drum at speeds that men can't normally do unless the devil was there in them okay this is doctrine for us today okay we've already established what paul wrote in the pauline epistles is doctrine specific for us today okay see satan is doing these things here today deceiving people with all power and signs and lying wonders but see Without the body of Christ on the earth, that man of sin is going to do them far more readily and easily than he could today. See? See? Okay? Paul is writing this in context that we are on the earth. Okay? But see, Satan is doing these very things today. Okay? All right? But see, without us here, he who now letteth will let... It's not there, the 144,000 Jews, but they're going to be going to the Jews specifically. Okay? So this is relative doctrinally for today, you devil, you wicked devil. You're banking on the ignorance of people. And that the fact that we don't, that most of us have a short attention span. You wicked, lying devil. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? We have the truth within us. We have the love of the truth within us. And we can fall and get messed up. And see, because the Lord is in us, if we are foolish and decide to put the scriptures away, the Lord is still within us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? But see, those who fall away, they don't have that love of the truth. Okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Those who fall away have not received the love of the truth. And they're having their ears tickled and itched, which Paul talks about in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Okay? But see, in order to defend oneself and their heresy and to attack others, well, this is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. See, that man of sin, the son of perdition, will be able to pull these things off more readily and easily during the time of Jacob's trouble because the body of Christ is not there. But while the body of Christ is here today, he is doing these exact things. This is doctrine. Okay? This is doctrine. You're being told that God loves you. Just believe. Okay? Nonsense like that. Okay? Because they receive not the love of the truth. Okay? All right? 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Well, strong delusion there is only about that man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, strong delusion today? <laughs> oh, just believe. Okay. Uh, you are, God is a respecter of persons because of your skin color or nationality. Okay, God is a respecter of persons. You got to see the Lord with your eyes today. Okay, you got to speak in tongues. Blah, 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 blah. And that proves you are saved. You're elect or not elect. Okay? Uh, Christians are going through the time, are going through the great tribulation. Strong delusion. Hmm. Hold your place here. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Okay. Isaiah chapter 66. Brethren, people, watch out. Watch out. Oh, Isaiah 65. Excuse me. Isaiah 65. Or is it 66? Yes, it's Isaiah 66. Excuse me. Isaiah 66. Verses 3 and 4. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 again. Okay? Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Uh, someone today who does not receive a love of the truth, but has pleasure in unrighteousness, that they're a good person, that they can save themselves by, their, by just believing, that they are saved because they can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Okay? Strong delusion. Strong delusion. Okay? Strong delusion is not in a singular sense just one thing. Isaiah 66, verses 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighted in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions, and I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hmm. Hmm. And that was written in Isaiah, under the law, doctrinally for under the law, as this is written in the Pauline epistles, doctrinally for us today. You got a devil coming around telling you to justify falling away to protect his little rear end? and to attack others, watch out. And see, on that basis of trying to confuse you what falling away actually is, then hey, that opens the door. Well, strong delusion, that doesn't apply for, oh, it's instruction in righteousness, but not doctrinally today. Get away from someone like that. They're a lying devil. They're deceiving you. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And then, the, well, there's no damned people today. And then, then you'll see, when you bring up Arturo Sosa, and you watch them, well, uh, well, yeah, 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 okay. And then you bring up Kenneth Copeland. And then they tried to say, well, he could still, okay. And yes, that's true. The impossible is possible with God, yes. But when you see it with someone trying to like, uh, 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 with Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order. Yeah. 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 Cover blown. Yeah. 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 And see, these guys who have made their choice, you know, who think that on their deathbed, they know the truth, but have actively done everything contrary to the truth, and then on your deathbed, you're going to repent and believe and be saved. <laughs> and then, just
just as the easy believism heretics did with Romans chapter 10, with Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14, these devils, they said, well, they never deal with verse 14. And verse 14 in Romans 10, which we have discussed, is talking about those who are the sent ones who are sent out to preach the gospel. Yes, we are all in the ministry of reconciliation, but not everyone is called to be a preacher or a teacher or whatever. Okay, that's what verse 14 is talking about. See, what they did was they, they focused all their energy and built everything on believed on the, in the one verse in verse 14. That's what they did for Romans 10. And they're doing the same thing here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in verse 13 with the but. Same thing. The same thing. The same modus operandi. The same tactics. Everything. But they've changed the direction from going from Romans to now Thessalonians. Why? Why? Easy believism heretics did it to justify their just believe satanic doctrine. Others will do this with 2 Thessalonians to say, hey, yeah, I'm just, I'm saved, but I'm falling away. Or, brother, so and so, I believe he's saved, but he's just fallen away. I don't really care for his holiness that much, but uh, he is not the whole focus of what this is about, like some people have made him their focus. The Lord is what this is about, and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And they say, well, that's see, uh, verses 3 under 12, that's doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble, and then Paul is breaking in again. That, no. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked devil. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? All right? Okay? Paul is talking about, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Hmm. And see, someone who has fallen away, who has not the love of the truth, Okay? See, Paul is distinguishing for us in here what the difference is between fallen and fallen away. Okay? And he's talking about, with the son of perdition, okay, Satan is today doing all these things from verses 9 on to 12 today. Okay? But when the body of Christ is out of the way, he's going to be unhindered so he can do these plainly. He's going to be, he's going to be revealed and there's not going to be anyone being, hey! Okay? The only ones who I believe are, are going to be those who get left behind, who realize that they were duped by these devils and they are going to be the part of those that get killed right away. Hence, being no threat to that man of sin, the son of perdition anyway. Okay? Doctrinally, this is doctrine for us today, okay? He is merely telling what is going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble with an unhindered man of sin. This is doctrine for us today. This is doctrine for us today. You liar. Whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions 
which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Because there are so many come that have, over the centuries, come in and want to affix themselves unto the church of the living God, but sin is in, evil is good, and good is evil now, and they are being made manifest, and the fake are falling away. Well, Paul is reminding us that, hey, all these lost, lying devils who infiltrated and saying they are of us and they're not of us, okay? On the outside, yes, they were saying they stood for our God. But in time, it was revealed that they weren't. Hence, they are falling away. Okay? And the falling away can make, can mess up saved brethren and cause them to fall. But see, salvation, the Lord lives in you. You cannot fall away. You cannot fall away. Saved people don't fall away, you liar. But devils like you do. Because you were never of us. Now, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. <laughs> or our epistle. Yeah. Noting the epistles within the Pauline epistles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Yes. And also look at Second Thessalonians chapter three, uh, 3, verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle... <laughs> Note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Okay? This epistle, Paul right there saying that this specific epistle, 2 Thessalonians, its entirety, is doctrine written for us today in this dispensation. You dirty lying devil. You wicked, dirty, lying devil, sociopathic, wicked devil. Where, where, where is the body of Christ that's like, I've seen this before. They did that with the uh, Romans thing. Now, repackage and come out with the thing about second decimal. Hmm. You angry, huh, bro? Yeah. Brethren, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this, if you do. Brethren, <laughs> the, devils, the devils want you never to forget your past and others to forget your failings so they can keep you shackled. But they don't want you to remember what they have tried in the past to try to deceive people. Listen to me. If someone comes along trying to tell you that within the Pauline epistles, Paul was writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble within the attributed Pauline epistles from Roman unto Philemon, you can't prove me neither yea or nay on Hebrews. The Lord wrote the scriptures, okay? If someone comes along telling you that Paul within those very Pauline epistles was writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. That man is a deceiver. He is a liar. He is an infiltrator. And stay away from him. Stay away from him. Because they are doing that to justify themselves keep their cover, and also to start attacking others of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Beware, brethren. Beware. Please. 
Don't be deceived by a smile, by a soft and piteous vocal inflection. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Keep us in your prayers. Pray for one another. This is Monday. Uh, like I said to the brethren, um, uh, uh, brother, I did get your thing on Skype um, this week, definitely. You and I, definitely. And this week also, you know, we're going to be doing this. Once a week, get, staying in contact with the brethren. You know, it's, that's what we're supposed to do. So, anyway, we love you. Thank you to those of you who help us and pray for us. Pray for one another. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.